Welcome back to season two or year two of Tigers franchise here on Emble Beat the Show 24. I tried to play the AAA opener just to get used to them, and I accidentally sent the actual opening day where we lost four, nothing. Bobby Witt, JD Martinez, and Kyle Isbell uh, hit home runs. They got the W. Meanwhile, uh, Tarek got. Two earned runs, and then Kevin Garcia as well. Jace Jung, the rookie, did not get a hit at all, and we only had one hit, and that was with Badu. So instead, we're going to get Walker Bueller's debut here in year two, so let's get it started. It's a one-two count after uh, Garcia flew out to left field. Let's see Walker Bueller. It's going to be a pop-up in foul territory for Jace Jung. But that's going to be two away. And we're going to see 0-2 oh, count to Bobby Witt Jr. And that's going to be a ball just a little bit too low. Let's see if we can get him to get out to end the first. And he's going to keep on fighting. Follow off another pitch. As it's the 11th pitch of the inning for Walker Bueller and Bobby Witt Jr. He's staying alive. It'll be the 12th pitch, I think fourth or fifth, and he gets the knuckle curve swinging. So through one, shout out in it for Walker Bueller. As Badu gets another base hit, as now Riley Green's up to the plate. He's gonna hit that, but that's gonna be a fly out to left field. That's gonna be one away. Maybe Spencer Torkelson can do something. Maybe. I mean, we already tallied our hits from last game as it was a weird foul ball. But hey, we'll take it. And that's going to be a double play. And it's going to be a 1 2 3 inning for the Tigers. Well, Royals and the Tigers. As it's a 1 2 count to JD Martinez, the 15 year vet. Ooh, I don't agree with that. That probably should have been strike three, but we'll take it. As that's going to be a fly out to Riley Green to make it one away. Now, here in the bottom of the second, we're going to show Colt Keith, third place winner for AL Rookie of the Year last year. Didn't get off to a really good start last. Well, opening day as he had three strikeouts. So that's going to be a very solid hit. Going back at the track at the wall and caught by the center fielder. Now we come up with two outs, a runner on first. As we're basically at the top of the lineup here in the top of the third. So far, so good. I believe Walker Bueller's only given up a hit or two. I know that there's an error to have a man go on base as well so overall not a bad debut in the Detroit Tigers uniform as 34 pitches in swing and miss the slider way out there it's still 0-0 and now Edison Polino is up now I thought he was an international prospect turns out he was with the Red Sox and oh boy that's gonna be a big mistake I don't know what the left fielder was doing and with the speed, we're gonna get a lead off triple from Polino. All for Jace Jung, our top prospect in the organization. Opening day, he didn't get a hit, that's all right. That's why there's 162 games to get a hit. And Jace Jung, he may not get his first career hit, but he's gonna get his first major league career RBI on that fielder's choice. And then Ricky Day, our third round pick last year, he's gonna make his debut. That's a deep fly ball, but not deep enough as the left fielder's gonna get that for two away. Third leadoff double, now we're gonna face Bobby Witt Jr. And it looks like, well, it was the second baseman. And just like that, Bobby Witt's gonna get an RBI single and tie this ball game up. Bottom of the fourth is still 1-1, one, one. Spencer Torkelson, I don't know, Torkelson? He's going to ground out the third. And then Kerry Carpenter is now up as well. <laughs> and that's going to be an error on the second baseman. I don't know what he was doing. That was a horrible play, but 
keeps the inning alive for sure as Colton Keith is now up 0 for 1 and it, right he does sound like a country singer and a perfect perfect to Bobby Witt and Bobby Witt's not going to let that go by top of the fifth two outs runners on the corners hopefully we can shut down Kyle Isbell and really uh, keep this game a 1-1 game it's been kind of a barn burner so far 1-1 the Royals have been out hitting us for sure. I believe we only have one, maybe two hits. Which is not surprising. We're not a very good offensive team at all. But 67 pitches in. Walker Bueller. As he's going to give up a run, it's going to be 2 1 Royals. Bobby Witt, who already has one of the RBIs already. Can extend the lead for the former first round pick in back in 2019 is worth every penny but he's gonna ground out to Polino and the damage is only gonna be one run I was right we have two hits that's gonna be third Matt Barreting hit a double and we got Edison Polino up who already has a triple to do an error we did acquire him from the Phillies um, I tried to sign him but for some reason it, it's weird the show is weird like that but Polino, he's going to get an RBI single potentially. We got the speed. Oh, he got no. He's safe. All right. 2-2 two, two game. There's one thing we have on Detroit is we have speed. We may not have the best bats, but we're one of the fastest teams in the league. Jace Jung. Oh, what a beautiful play by the third baseman. But he's not going to get there in time as Jace Jung's finally going to get his first major league hit. A year ago, Ricky Day was... Roughly a year, yeah. He was hitting against high school hitters, and now he's in the major leagues as a 19-year-old, potentially to get a huge opportunity. Bobby Witt is going to get there. Oh, it's an error. It counts. Ricky Day gets his first major league hit. I don't know if that's going to count as an error as well, but we'll take the 3-2 lead. We'll, we will absolutely take it. That was a wild throw. But... Badu in the young season, he's been our hottest hitter. He has the most hits on the team with like two. But still, one of the hottest hitters. As he takes ball one. Acquired him in the 2020 Rule 5 draft. He's one of the, I would say, quickest guys on the team. But we're going to take another run, extend the lead to two here in the bottom of the fifth. Scoring Jace Jung. Green, he's going to add another one, another fielder's choice. More runs, the better. Now we're here, bottom of the seventh. Edison Polino is two for two as well. Facing Seth Lugo, that's going to be a shallow to mid fly ball. It's going to end his hitting streak. But, or end his perfect, per se. He's going to not reach on base all the time. Jace Jung, he's going to get a bloop single to left field. Second hit of his career. you love to see it. Now let's see if Ricky Day can respond to maybe get his actual first RBI as he's going to take ball one. Reach down an error, but like I was saying before that crazy play, he's also a switch hitter. Did not know that or forgot about it. Has... Uh, he went from hitting high school pitchers and whatnot to now he's in the major leagues his first year. As he's going to pop up, got the curveball. Man, that ball is just in the air forever. Back here in the bottom of the eighth to potentially extend the lead, but also get Colt Keith going. He had a slow start a little bit last year, but it depends as it's gonna be an error, man. The Royals are a little bit sloppy. I know it's the second game of the season, but Bobby Witt's shown a little bit sluggish. And now it's gonna be runners on the corners for Matt Fearling. As he's just gonna hit it to Bobby Witt. Bobby Witt is gonna redeem him himself. As it's going to be a fly ball to center field and the Detroit Tigers are gonna take game two against the Royals. Walker Buehler didn't do too bad. But overall, a little bit sloppy play helped us get the dub. We head to Toledo to player lock with Troy Wilkes. 
our young third baseman that we required from the Brewers. One of the top prospects. Yeah, he's number one in ours. Number five overall in all of baseball. So I figured I would show you guys what he's been up to. I did play, like I said at the beginning of the episode, the AAA. Home opener. Accidentally sim the actual opening day. So as Wilkins is going to hit a deep fly ball out in the left. But it's going to be at the warning track and caught. As there's another man on burst for another opportunity for Wilkes. Wilkes is going to hit into a double play, though. So he's 0 for 2 so far today. Okay. He's going to redeem himself, hopefully. There's a runner on second and first. No outs here in the top of the six. It's 2-2 ball game against Omaha and Wilkes. It is going to drop. One runner will score. Will another one score? Bang, bang at the plate. A two-run RBI double for Wilkes. You'll love to see it. So now it's 5-2 to two here. Wilkes can really close it out. Maybe I shouldn't be swinging at first pitches all the time, but he's getting good hit looks as this is another fly out. So we do win the game 5-2, and Mario Rolis, our first round pick, went five innings, three hits, six strikeouts, one walk, and two earned runs. We head to the six up north of the border, Canada. It's a one nothing game here in Toronto. Situation to hopefully get guys on base and potentially win this game. Oh, but Badu hits that deep fly ball off the top of the wall. Let's see. Oh, this is not going to be very smart. Potentially, he's going to get a stand up triple with one out. We love the speed. Do is a great leadoff hitter for that, or number one hitter, just for his speed. And Matt Vlaring, he's going to get a grounder. It's going to be two outs. Dang, man. Well, maybe Riley Green can pick up the slack. As he does take ball one. Ella De La Cruz is now on the Dodgers. Sorry, I paused there because I just saw that. As Riley Green is going to hit a RBI double, two out double to tie this ball game up here in Toronto. Spencer Torkelson will try to take the lead here or help us take the lead. Can he get the job done? Oh, that seems like it's going to be not good enough. No. But we do tie the ball game up thanks to Riley Reed and Akil Badu. We do enter with two outs, a man on first. It's 2-1 ball game. Matt Moore is up pitching. No, not the former NFL QB, but another Matt Moore. And he swings and misses, and the Tigers take the comeback win here in Canada. As we will take a quick trip back to Toledo to check on Max Clark, one of our top prospects in the organization, as he's going to fly out to left field. And it's already 3-0 deficit so max clark's gonna follow it out i don't know there's been rumors he's obviously a top 15 prospect there's rumors that he might get called up because you know our bats are struggling and he's kind of not doing terrible in uh triple a he didn't do bad in triple a last year 19 20 years old um but who knows I think I might want to give him an extra year down in AAA. I don't think it's going to hurt him. As Now it's a 6 nothing lead as they do lose as Mario kind of struggled. He did have eight strikeouts, but did give up five earned runs as well. As we take out the first week of scouting we have the sixth overall pick we also have the 39th overall pick which seems to be very nice and it seems like this top of this draft could be very interesting as josh mcneil seems to be a very good contact hitter pretty good power as well vision discipline 
maybe he is a potential top guy, and then Floyd Milton, maybe as well. Then obviously Brett Matthews. And then maybe Craig Camp as well. But we'll see. I think the first guys that we got to look, I think we got to look at Josh McNeil. For sure. Uh, I think pitcher, I think we're going to look at starting pitching. Potentially Jose Fernandez. He seems to be very good. His walks per nine seems to be great. Velocity and pitch break as well. But I think we're going to go rock with Connor Meadows. See if he can, if he's a potential uh, top guy. And then I think we're going to rock with Floyd Milton as well. We're going to hop in quickly before ending this episode, potentially winding down this episode. Uh, we're going to face the Texas Rangers at home, top of the eighth. Bases loaded, two outs. And oh boy. This cannot get any worse than it has. They're going to extend their lead to three. To end the episode, we're going to check quickly on the stats. Verling is struggling at 176. Colton Keith not doing too bad. Carrie Carpenter is really bad at 167. Riley Green, 273. How about Jay Strong? 11 hits, which is second on the team. RBIs, he's second, hitting 281. You love to see it, but is struggling very, very mightily. Uh, Jake Rogers is doing terrible, hitting one. 100, uh, unbelievable. Javi Baez, Baez, 118, 163, 167. One, I mean, it's just bad. Spencer Torkelson, 231, 273, 278. Ricky Day, 200. Uh, you know, in three games, I, I you know, it, it is what it is um just really bad pitching walker bueller's been fine so far it seems like will vest seems to be pretty solid i mean I, I don't know what to do with him man 28 years old he is struggling mightily it's early on in the season but so far in this series he is not looking like our ace at all and we're paying him 14 million dollars to do this unacceptable i mean it's still early on in the season we're in but he might be a early potential trade offer because i'm not paying a guy 14 million dollars to have an era of almost six meanwhile luis mendez i get it maybe he's just not ready yet again maybe we should call someone else up but for the most part flaherty's doing a good job Bo as well and matt manning he's not doing well but uh, it's just three guys other than that not doing terrible tyler holt's not doing great either and Kevin Garcia has gotten absolutely shelled. But again, he's only pitched eight innings and allowed eight runs. So, you know, it is what it is. While we look at AAA, Jackson Job, one of our top pitching prospects last year. He's not doing too shabby. Not great either. Uh, Drew Heckenberg has gotten absolutely shelled in two starts. And same thing with Wilmer Flores. Well, no, not Wilmer. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know why it didn't show that. But relief, in, relief pitchers are not doing too bad. But next episode, we're going to look at Mario Rolis. We're going to player lock with him. So far, three starts. He really did good the last two. And then with the sim with Max Clark, he hasn't done the best. But, I mean, listen, seven earned runs, 20 strikeouts, and 16 innings pitch. That's pretty impressive for the 22-year-old. But I hope you enjoyed this first episode of year two. Let me know down in the comments what you think our predictions are right now. We are six and seven. We're kind of borderline. And, you know, we have some guys in triple, I mean, not triple A. Yeah, in triple A that aren't doing too bad. Max Clark is struggling huge. We got like Max Barefoot, Matthew Barefoot, who's killing it. Wilkins isn't doing too terrible. Brandon Bell, Justin Crawford, Hung Hu Yu Lee, you know. But overall, we're struggling. But I also know it's early on in the season. But let me know maybe we, who we should call up from AAA or, you know, maybe bench some guys on the major league level. And let me know how excited you are to see Mario Rolis' debut in the series. And until next time, you guys have a good one. Peace.